In this video, you'll be taking your skills to the next level with practical follow along examples that are sure to push your Blender skills to new heights. This is part of my Get Good at Blender series, so be sure to check out the playlist link in the description and my website for more practical challenges and other great tutorials. This video is aimed at beginners with a basic understanding of modeling, but even more seasoned creators are sure to pick up some useful tips and tricks. If you like this style of learning with challenges and a methodical approach, then you won't want to miss out on my in-depth and detailed courses. With my Blender Beginner Bundle, you'll get three amazing courses that will take you from novice to pro. And the best part, you can get all these three courses for only $30. So for less than the cost of a fancy dinner, you could be well on your way to becoming a master of your craft. So are you ready to take your skills to the next level? Then jump right in and start the challenges. The way this works is I show you the shape, you create it in the best way you can, then I'll show you how I made it. So I'm in Blender 3.4.1, but these tools should work in most versions of Blender. My screencast keys are down the bottom here. I'll get rid of the timeline so it's not distracting. And the first model I want you to make is this one in the middle here. So nice, easy start. And here it is from front view so you can see the height. And I'll press N on my keyboard and go to items and you can see the dimensions here. It's fine if you stick to one meter for X and Y. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you didn't find that too difficult. So I'll start with a new blank scene and show you how I made that. So with the default cube selected, I can press G, Z, one, and press enter to move it one blender unit in the Z axis onto the floor as it were. I can press S and shift Z, so scale, but not in the Z axis, 0.5, and press enter. And if I press N on my keyboard, you can see the dimensions are one meter by one meter by two meters. Okay, so let's edit the shape. Go to edit mode with tab on my keyboard. There's several ways to create the shape. The way I'm going to do it is to press Ctrl R to do a loop cut and use the wheel of my mouse to create two. You can also press Ctrl plus and minus on your numpad if for some reason you don't have a wheel. I'll left click to set those and left click again to set the position. I'll scale these in the Z to move them upwards and downwards accordingly. And that looks about right. Interface mode with three or I can press face mode up here. E to extrude, S to scale and bring those downwards like so. And probably somewhere around here. I'll tab back into object mode so we can see that shape and hopefully came up with something similar. For the next shape, I want you to do something like this. And you can just duplicate your first shape to make the edits. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll press Shift D to duplicate and I'll move it across in the X axis. So press X and move that across, minus two blender units. So it's back over here. Into edit mode with tab or edit mode up here. And we need to bring each of these faces around the middle inwards. So with them all selected, I can press I and that insets it like this, which is almost there. Notice at the very top of my screen up here, I have some commands and I can press I for individual faces and left click. Now, unfortunately, I'm not getting the result I want. There's a bigger distance here than there is here. So I'll undo those changes, go back to object mode and come up to item to show you that the scale is non-uniform, so it's not all set to one. And the inset tool is trying to incorporate that scale when it's insetting. I need to reset this to one, but keep the size that it is. We do that by pressing Control A and apply the scale. And notice the scale sets to one now. When I tab into edit mode now and press I to inset, I've still got my individual faces on, but notice how it's coming in square now instead. So I can inset them to here. And notice you can open up the dialog box and choose the settings here, such as individual, for example. You can also click and drag and change the thickness slightly if you need to. Lastly, you can actually change the depth here, but I'm going to leave that as it is and minimize this because we want to extrude these inwards so there's extra faces. If I press extrude now and S to scale, it does bring them inwards and it creates quite a nice result, but it is scaling them all into this point here. So if you wanted a completely flat indent here, you can press E and press enter. So we've extruded and then Alt S to scale them inwards by the normals. That's the direction the faces are facing. But I'll undo those changes and just E to extrude once and S to scale because I actually quite like them coming in in this direction and having a slight slope inwards. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with that. The last one I want you to try is this one here. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'm back into object mode, object mode up here, and I'll press Shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. You can also find the add menu up here. With my cylinder, you can keep it to 32 faces around the outside, but you can also come to the dialog box down here and change it to something like 16, which is what I had. 
Not that it makes too much difference in this case. I'll press GZ then one to move it above the floor, GX minus four to move it across, and scale shift Z to move it inwards. So it's a similar size to the other ones, about one meter. And remember you can find the dimensions by pressing N on your keyboard and going to item. Now, because I scaled in object mode, remember the scale is non-uniform. So that might affect things like my inset tool. So let's press control A and apply the scale. And now it's back to one. I could have avoided that by making my edits to the shape scale in edit mode. And this would still be at one because we've made those changes in edit mode. So let's go across to edit mode with tab now, control R to do a loop cut and use the wheel of my mouse to create two, left click once to set them, left click again to set their position and scale Z to move them up like this. Now I can go to face mode with three on my keyboard or face mode up here and select the middle faces and I'll zoom in for this by selecting one of the edges going across the face loop that you want. So in face mode, I can hold Alt and left click on one of those edges and it selects the entire face loop. Now I can extrude this and scale it. And at this point, still in face mode, I can go around and select different faces and I to inset. This time I don't want individual, so I can press I again to turn that off and bring it to somewhere around there, E to extrude and scale inwards. And remember you can use the Alt S command if you want to scale by the normals. Now notice that this has gone in more at the top than it has at the sides. That's just due to the shape. I can actually scale all these in the Z to kind of even that out. And there we have it, something similar to what we had before. Okay, let's go to section two. I want you to duplicate your three shapes and edit them so that they are all roughly three meters. Pause the video and have a go at that. Now hopefully you found that fairly easy, but also hopefully you found the quick way of doing this. I'll zoom out, select all my shapes, shift D, Y, three to move them back three, press enter and let's move in a bit. And rather than selecting one, going into edit mode and editing the shape, I'll come back to object mode. We can select all three and go into edit mode with all three. I'll deselect any faces with Alt A and I'm going to hide these ones at the front here as well by clicking on the eyes in the outliner just to make it easier for you to see. I'll press one on my numpad to go to front view. Alt Z to go to X-ray view. That's X-ray view just up here. I can then select those top faces. G Z one for one blender unit and press enter. I'll press Alt Z to come out of wireframe mode and tab to go back into object mode. And you can see I've made my pillars that bit taller. Okay, so the last task then is to take one of your pillars and create an arch at the top. Make sure you have a duplicate of your pillar in case you want to reuse it. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I've taken one of my original arches. Go to edit mode and choose the very top face. I'll press period key on my numpad to zoom in on that so I can center my camera. I'll press I to inset. So this is a face for our arch to come out of. And for the arch, I'm going to use the spin tool. That's the spin tool down here. So I'll click on that. I'll minimize my dialog box and press N on my keyboard to get rid of the side panel. And let's zoom out just a touch. Notice we've got this kind of controller thing here and it's based around my 3D cursor. So if I click and drag one of these plus signs, it creates this spin with 12 steps, as we can see up here, around the 3D cursor. So I'll undo that. So I need to position my 3D cursor as if it's in the center of the arch. So let's go to front view for that. Zoom in a touch. We probably want our arch to be two pillars width. So that will take the middle to this point here. So I can shift right click to move my 3D cursor to that point. At the moment, it's set to the Z axis. So if we look at our Cartesian coordinates over the side here, it's going around this blue line. I need to change that to the Y. So it goes around the Y axis, as you can see here. And if I click and drag on one of these plus icons here and start moving, we can see I've created an arch. If I hold down control, I can actually snap to the middle like this and then release your left mouse button to set it in place. If you want to change anything, you can come down to the dialog box here and you can change things like the steps and move the axis here and even the center. Note, you can't change the steps here once it's been created. That's only before you use the tool, you can set the amount of steps you want. Once you've used the tool, you change them here and 12 steps is looking quite good. So I can go back to my selection tool now and take a look at what we've got. That's looking great. Now I need to mirror this across the other side. So let's go to our modifier, add modifier, and then mirror, and we can see it's not working. It's the correct axis, which is along the X axis like this, but it's going around our object origin, which is in the center here. So I need to move my origin to the middle. There's a couple of ways of doing this. We can go into object mode, go up to options and choose origins and G then X 
to move that across, which is a fine way to do it. I'll undo that though and turn off effect origins only and go back into edit mode. The other way of doing this is to choose a face that's in the middle like this, which happens to be selected at the moment, and then shift S for my cursor menu and cursor to selected. Then I can go into object mode, right click, set my origin point to the 3D cursor. And notice because the origin point is in the middle, we've now got our mirror on the other side. Now I'm going to go back into edit mode and press Alt Z and zoom in on this area. Notice we've still got that face in the middle. So I do need to select that and delete it. So delete and then faces. It's also worth turning clipping on so it actually sticks together in the middle. And there we've created a nice arch. So your next challenge is to create an arch like this. Remember to duplicate your original if you want to use that as a base point. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'm still in edit mode. I'll go to edges with two or edges up here. Alt left click to select that middle edge loop and I'll zoom in on that. And to bring this upwards and create a kind of curve to it, we can use the proportional edit tool. I'll click on that. O is the shortcut for that and press G then Z to pull it upwards. Now this is okay, but it's not quite what I want. So I'll undo that. And in the drop down, I'll choose sharp. Now when I press G then Z, I can bring this upwards and change my circle of influence with the wheel. So probably something around here. Now it does distort the shape slightly, and that kind of works in my opinion, but you may want to scale in the Z as well if you want it to keep that sort of uniform shape. And there we have an interesting archway. So hopefully that was helpful to you and you learned some new tools or just reinforced some of the skills you already had. If you got any questions or you did it a different way, then do comment below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.